come with me. Okay. We'll go somewhere we'll talk. Away from all these people, okay? Yeah, yes. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was an American superhero movie made in 2014. It was the sequel to The Amazing Spider-Man movie produced in 2012. This movie was also the fifth cinema representation of Spider-Man produced by Columbia Pictures and also the final movie in the Amazing Spider-Man series. It became the ninth highest grossing movie of 2014, but weirdly also the lowest grossing Spider-Man movie till date, coming in at 709 million worldwide. The movie introduced us to the Spider-Man villain, Electro, who is well known to comic book lovers around the world, but also new to the cinematic universe. The movie also saw the return of Peter Parker's childhood friend, Harry Osborn, as mostly a meddler than an outright villain in my opinion. Now, what if Electro had turned out to be good, or even an outright hero in this movie arc? How would the story have gone if Electro had decided to use his powers for good instead? What would have happened if the fact that Spider-Man once saved him made Electro a better person? The purpose of this fan fiction is to explore these possibilities. Let's find out together what the movie would have looked like if Electro was good. So sit back and enjoy as we take you on this twist of a journey. After being saved by Spider-Man, Max Dillon's view of the world changed. If Spider-Man could save him, who was practically invisible, then maybe he could do more to make a positive impact on the world than just going through the motions and routine of his mundane life. He decided that from that day on, he was going to do more and dedicate his life to the good of mankind, and he had to admit, I had to feel good to think this way. He had gone to Oscorp that day as usual and went about his duties with a new energy that came with wanting to be better and more alive in the world. While working at Oscorp Laboratory, there was a blackout caused by something unknown to him at that point. And while he stumbled in the dark trying to find his way, he fell over the rails and into a tank that was filled with genetically mutated electric eels. He had been burnt beyond recognition as a human. It turned out that while the scientists had been carrying out experiments on the eels, they had caused the power to short circuit, causing a city-wide blackout. As soon as the backup generator kicked in, the scientists met with a horrifying scene that consisted of a charred Max Dillon surrounded by dead electric eels. The whole thing was written off as a freak accident, and Norman ordered that the body be disposed of and the accident be covered up. Max Dillon was dumped in the city dump as they had assumed he had died, but he didn't die. All he needed was to be resurrected was a little spark from a weakened battery. He opened his eyes to a new reality. He was no longer the ordinary Max Dillon that followed a daily routine. He was not some sort of walking, living electric generator. He didn't blame anybody for the accident, but rather saw it as a gift from God in answers to his prayers about having been more than ordinary. Although he had to admit he was lost as to what to do with what he had become or how to go about even being a hero he wanted to be. But there was only one person who was going to know the answers to every Every question that was swimming through his mind, and that person was Spider-Man. So he decided to find Spider-Man and ask for his help. The easiest way to find Spider-Man was to follow the police sirens. He had worn a hoodie to cover his face and waited until he heard the sirens, and then he just followed them and ended up in Times Square. We had found Spider-Man battling it out with a group of criminals that had just robbed the city bank. As Spider-Man fought them, ignoring the police officers, he walked into the chaos of the fight. One of the robbers decided to use him as a human shield against Spider-Man. Spider-Man, and Spider-Man tried to convince the robber to let him go. He touched the robber and shocked him with the volts of electricity until he passed out. He then revealed his face to Spider-Man and told him that he needed his help. He had been involved in a freak accident and didn't know what to do with all this power. The police officers moved back as everything electric around Max sparked and jolted around him. Spider-Man immediately told him that if anybody couldn't understand him, he did. And then he told Max that all he needed to do was to take a deep breath and calm down. As he emptied his mind, everything stopped and electricity stopped jumping into them. Spider-Man told him that he got this and then told him him to meet him outside town at a place where there were very few people and where he could do the least damage. Spider-Man then suggested the old factory with abandoned warehouses, and he agreed. While he covered his face and disappeared into the crowd, the police wanted to go after him, but Spider-Man stopped them. He told them that it was not dangerous, just 
scared and confused, and that he was going to take care of everything. Later that evening, Spider-Man went to the abandoned factory and met Max Dillon waiting for him. Max Dillon immediately expressed gratitude that Spider-Man had come back at his back of his mind. He had expected that Spider-Man was never going to show up. Spider-Man then asked him, what happened? And he explained the freak accident that turned him into this electric creature, and Spider-Man told him that it was something similar to what turned him into Spider-Man. The problem was that how was he going to live his regular life? Then he told Spider-Man he didn't want a regular life. He was okay being different. This was something that he wanted a chance to do more and help more. And all he needed was Spider-Man's help to be able to do more. Peter agreed to help him on the condition that he was not going to leave the warehouse until he was able to control his abilities and not be a danger to society. Max agreed and Peter told him he was going to help him as much as he could. For weeks, Peter helped Max get a hold of his powers and every day brought things that would make the warehouse more homey for Max. He taught him how to control his powers and be creative with them. Then he walked on a containment suit that would give him more control and allow him to safely interact with other people without hurting them as long as he didn't want to. Meanwhile, Harry began to see the first signs of the same cancerous illness that had taken his father. It was genetic and something he could not avoid and, unluckily for him, he inherited it from his father and with everything else including the company and the wealth. Before Norman had died, he gave Harry a device and told him to look into it if he ever got the same disease. From the device, he discovered that Spider-Man's blood was the one thing that had a chance of saving him from death, and this gave him hope he had lost. He knew that Peter Parker was the sole photographer of Spider-Man, which meant Peter definitely knew Spider-Man. He decided to reach out to Peter about meeting Spider-Man. Peter then told him that Spider-Man could not help him as what had happened to Dr. Connors was a result of using Spider-Man's blood, and he didn't think Spider-Man would want that to happen to him. This angered Harry. He didn't think that Peter needed to speak for Spider-Man. All he needed was for Peter to help him meet Spider-Man, and that was all. His life on the line, and the only chance he had was if Spider-Man agreed to help him. So, Peter agreed to help him meet Spider-Man. Later that same day, Peter came to meet Harry, but as Spider-Man. Harry then proceeded to explain his whole ordeal to Spider-Man. He didn't need much, he just wanted a vile Spider-Man's blood that might give him a chance at living, that was all. But, Spider-Man told Harry he couldn't help him. He was almost certain that what had happened to Dr. Connors was going to happen to him. He already blamed himself for Dr. Connors situation and didn't want to cause Harry any harm and have that on his conscience too. Harry proceeded to beg him. He told him he preferred taking a chance at a living as a freak than not living at all. But Spider-Man apologized to him and said he couldn't help and that Harry should find another way. This angered Harry. He screamed at Spider-Man and jumped out of the window. What kind of hero was he that he was willing to take one chance at someone had a living. He was a fraud, a liar. Harry broke down and hated Spider-Man because he felt Spider-Man just didn't want to help him. He then decided to find the only person he knew that interacted with Spider-Man, and that was Electro. He made his investigation about him and found out that he was Max Dillon, a former employee of Oscorp, the thought to be dead. Using cut footage, he tracked down Max at the abandoned warehouse and tried to convince him to help him with his Spider-Man problems. But Max refused to help him. Spider-Man had refused to help Harry, he must have been for a good reason, so he couldn't help him either. Enraged, Harry said that he was not going to help him willingly, he is going to help him by force. He had prepared to get a negative answer from Max. He immediately ordered that a machine be dropped from a helicopter. It was actually a super insulating machine with a super Faraday cage inside that was strong enough to trap Max Dillon. And with it, it captured Max Dillon and took him to Oscorp before leaving a note at the warehouse, telling Spider-Man that he knew what to do to get Max back. He also knew where to come to. When Peter arrived at the warehouse, it was trashed, and he found the note from Harry telling him what he needed to do. But at that same moment, he got a text message from Gwen, where she told him that he had gotten the scholarship she had been trying to get, and had to leave for London that same night. He wanted to see her before she left, and he wanted badly to tell her how he felt about her, but he couldn't do that without abandoning his friend. And there was only one chance in this situation. 
He had to save Max and let Gwen leave without him seeing her. Meanwhile, Felicia Hardy, Harry's assistant, told him about the Secret Oscorp project that his father kept under wraps. With her help, they were able to access the secret room and there, they found Norman's equipment and armor from where he was the Green Goblin. They also found the venom of the spider that was responsible for Spider-Man's power. He then decided if that was what gave Spider-Man his powers, maybe it was going to cure him. Against the advice and better judgment of Felicia, Harry decided to inject the venom into himself, but it didn't help him. It only accelerated his illness. But like his father, the only thing that halted the degradation of his body was the Green Goblin armor, which was now doomed to wear until he was able to get a permanent cure for his illness. This only made Harry more desperate. Peter arrived just in time to see that Harry, he knew, no longer existed. All that was left was a sick, desperate shell of a person. Someone who referred to himself as the Green Goblin. He had arrived with a vial of his blood, and as he watched Harry in consistent pain, he decided to appeal to him again. He told Harry that this was not right, and he didn't need to do this. Harry only told him that he was now a monster. It couldn't get any worse for him. Peter then decided to reveal his identity to Harry, hoping that this was going to change his mind and in an attempt to calm him, but this backfired as it only enraged Harry first. Further. He couldn't believe Spider-Man had been his so-called friend all this time, and yet allowed his father to die, and was also willing to let him die too, even though he claimed to be his friend. Peter tried to let him know that he only made this decision because he was trying to protect him, but Harry immediately attacked Peter, enraged. He didn't understand how letting his father die of an illness could have saved him from protecting him. He then decided that he was going to destroy everything that Peter loved and also destroying him after letting him watch everything he loves die. At that moment, he powered a switch that was going to overload Max, killing him. But Peter immediately engaged him in a brutal fight. After being able to overpower Harry, he switched off the power and broke Max out of the cage, saving him. Enraged, Harry ranted, if he could not kill Max Dillon, there was one more person Peter loved, and he knew who that person was. He then activated a self-destruct button for the lab to distract Peter and Max before he climbed on his glider and headed for the airport. Gwen was in danger, and Peter was not going to forgive himself if anything happened to Gwen. It was a race against Harry. Both him and Max headed for the airport as fast as they could, hoping to intersect Harry before he could cause any damage. Meanwhile, Gwen had just been passed by airport security and was heading towards the plane to board it. She had no idea what was happening. She had settled down in the plane, and it had just lifted off the runway before the pilot had made an amount announcement that the plane had just been attacked. A missile was headed for the plane, and he told them to strap in their seatbelts and be ready for evasive maneuvers. It was Harry who had shot a missile from his glider towards the plane. Max Ben Electricity was able to push himself much faster than the missile after removing the suit Peter had made for him. He was able to redirect the missile away from the plane for it to safely fly away, but as the missile exploded, it was in the stratosphere. It killed him while Peter was able to stop and subdue Harry by using a web to remove his glider from under him and allowing him to fall into a cobweb of sticky webs trapping him there. Harry was arrested and sent to jail while Max Dillon was mourned across the city as a hero. Although guilt-ridden, he was motivated to live life a little further by Max. He found his way to London after a week and told Gwen how he felt about her after revealing that he had been Spider-Man all his while. Gwen took the reveal well and told him that she had always felt the same way. Peter moved to London permanently and started a new life there with Gwen. Well, that's all for this fanfiction where Electro was actually good. With Electro being a supporting hero, we got to see a more evil, darker Harry Osborn as the Green Goblin. We also get to see a Spider-Man who got the girl of his dreams and moves out of New York City. What do you think? If Max Dillon was treated a little better in the origin story, maybe it wouldn't have turned out to be bad. Maybe, in my opinion, all he wanted was to be seen. Have a friend who cared and find a little love. Maybe with all this, Electro would have been good like we saw in this fanfiction. What are your thoughts on how this fanfiction went? Do you think the twist on the story or do you have an alternative perspective different from this one? Well, that's all for now. Let me know in the comments what do you think of this fanfiction and what do you think would have happened? Share with me your thoughts on this and let me know which What If MCU fanfiction are you interested in seeing next. Until then, take care and stay safe.